So we've gone ahead and have drawn a tetrahedron here, and let's locate the hydrogen atoms first. So we're going to imagine that there's a hydrogen atom located at vertex A right here, and then a second hydrogen atom located at vertex C. And what we would like to do is identify the x, y, z coordinates of those two points. So we can assign this axis as the x-axis. This will be our y-axis, and then the z-axis will be going this way. Now with that convention, if we look at point A, we can see that the coordinates of point A would be one unit along the x-axis, zero units up the y-axis, and also zero units along the z-axis. And then if you go over to point C, we have zero units along the x-axis, one unit up the y-axis, and then zero units along the z-axis. So those are great coordinates for the two hydrogen atoms, and now let's locate the carbon atom. And the carbon atom is going to be located in the center of the tetrahedron. We've labeled it point P here. And we need coordinates for that as well. Now, the carbon atom is located at the centroid. And so what that means is that starting at the origin, rather than marching one unit to get to point A, we would only march half of a unit to get to this point here. We would then march another half of a unit up the y-axis and then half of a unit along the z-axis. That would place us at the centroid. So in conclusion, point P would have coordinates of one half, one half, and one half. And again, that's where the carbon atom is located. Now, to see the angle, we might wish to draw two vectors, both coming from point P. So we can draw a vector from point P to point C right there, and then a second vector going from point P to point A. And admittedly, the picture is a little unclear, but we're looking for that angle between those two vectors right there. And for now, we're just going to call that first vector vector A, and then the second vector we may wish to call vector B. And again, we're looking for the angle between those vectors, but before we can do that, we need to come up with the representation of those two vectors. We can start with vector A. Now, look at the way we drew vector A. It's going from point P to point C. And recall that to get the vector representation of vector A, you simply subtract the XYZ coordinates of the two points. Just make sure that you subtract them starting from the termination of the vector, so this point, and then minus the origin of the vector, which is point P. So for example, for the X, we're going to have 0 minus a half, which of course would be negative 1 half. For the y, we're going to have 1 minus a half, which is 1 half. And then for the z, we're going to have 0 minus a half, which is negative 1 half. So that is the vector representation of vector A. And then similarly, we can come up with a representation of vector B. Again, look at how vector B, B is drawn from point P to point A. So you take the termination of the vector and subtract the origin of the vector. So we'll have 1 minus a half, which is 1 half. Then we'll have 0 minus a half, which is negative half. And then we'll have another 0 minus half, which is also negative half. Great. So once we have these two vectors, we can begin to think about how to find the angle between them. Let's take a look at the equation we would use to do that. So here is that equation we can use to find the angle between vectors a and b. And we can see that we need a few things here. We can begin by considering the numerator of the right-hand side, which is the dot product. So we're going to want to calculate the dot product. So we'll go ahead and we'll say a dot b. And to do a dot product is very simple. All we have to do is multiply the x coordinates, multiply the y coordinates, and then also multiply the z coordinates, or I should say the components technically, and then add them together. So for example, multiplying the x components, we would have negative 1 half multiplied by positive 1 half. And then we add that to the product of the y components, which is positive 1 half times negative one half, and then same thing with the z components, negative one half times negative one half. Let's go ahead and simplify this. And we end up getting a dot product equal to negative one fourth. So that takes care of the numerator, but we can see that we also are going to need the magnitude of vector A as well as the magnitude of vector B. Let's talk about the magnitude of vector A next, and we might wish to make a little bit of room here to find the magnitude of vector A, we're basically doing a three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. So what that means is you take the square root and then you take the sum of the squares of each component. So for example, you would have negative one-half squared plus positive one-half squared plus negative one-half squared. Let's simplify underneath the square root. When we square everything there, we're going to end up with a bunch of one-fourths. So we'll just have one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth. 
And of course, this simplifies to the square root of 3 fourths. We can clean that up by rewriting that as the square root of 3 over the square root of 4, which finally simplifies to the square root of 3 divided by 2. So that's going to be the magnitude of vector A. Now, if you look at the components of vector B, you'll notice that they too are all just either positive or negative 1 half, just like the components for vector A. So when you do the calculation for the magnitude of vector B, you're going to get the same outcome. You're going to see that it's going to also equal the square root of 3 over 2. So now that we have the dot product and the magnitudes of each, com of each vector, we can start to plug them into the equation. We have the cosine of theta equals, and then the dot product came out to equal negative 1 fourth, over the magnitude of vector A, which was root 3 over 2, times the magnitude of vector B, also root 3 over 2. Let's simplify the denominator. When we multiply, we're going to get 3 over 4. This is still equal to the cosine of theta. If you look carefully, when you divide those fractions, the denominators will cancel out beautifully. So now we have the cosine of theta is equal to negative one third. And then finally, to solve for theta, you would just take the inverse cosine of negative one third. Make sure your calculator is set to its degree mode. And when you do this, lo and behold, you get about 109.5. So this shows that the angle between the hydrogen, carbon, and hydrogen of a methane molecule in that tetrahedron is 109.5 degrees. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.